Porsche has added a potent and seamless hybrid system to the iconic 911 sports car. The decision. The crazy part was the 992 generation Porsche 911 was supposed to be a hybrid from the start. Back in 2018 when Porsche was figuring it all out, the powertrain team couldn't decide what sort of hybrid to build. Something like a Prius that focused more on efficiency, a plug-in hybrid that would be able to go a certain distance on pure electric power, or a performance hybrid, where the battery's power was simply used to boost overall performance. Seems like an easy choice to make if you're Porsche, but we were assured it wasn't. No one could decide, and then the development process reached the point of no return. The 992.1 launched without a hybrid powertrain. However, the 992.1 S8 speed dual clutch PDK transmission's bell housing was engineered to leave space for an electric motor, and that case now does house an electric motor, for now exclusively in the GTS, good for 53 horsepower and 110 pounds to foot of torque. It connects to a brand new engine, the 3.6 litre flat 6 fitted with an electric turbocharger. Both the electric motor and the turbo are powered by a 60 pound, 400 volt, 1.9 kilowatt hour battery pack that sits above the front axle where the 12 volt battery used to reside. Total combined system power is 532 horsepower and 449 pounds to foot, up from 473 horsepower and 420 pounds to foot in the 992.1 GTS. You can read our review of the non-hybrid 992.2911 here. To keep the relatively small battery juiced, the gas engine and motor combination sends it electrons just like in a typical hybrid. However, the wastegate free electric turbo effectively regions to relieve boost pressure, sending additional electricity back to the battery. While the T-Hybrid system, T stands for turbo, as Porsche calls it, does have some benefits in terms of fuel economy and emissions, it was designed first and foremost as a performance enhancement. We should note Porsche claims the hybrid system adds 154 pounds to the car, but our test team hasn't weighed the new car to determine the real-world number. How's it look? On the outside, the easiest way to tell the 992.2 GTS apart from the 992.1 are the movable gills below the headlights. Controversial according to the internet, they look pretty good in person. Much more important, the gills are effective. When closed, the 992.2 Carrera GTS achieves an impressive drag coefficient of 0.29, though in other markets it's 0.27 because US market 911 hybrids lack an eco mode setting for the rear spoiler because of our country's brake light visibility requirements. Less efficiency through safety, which very well might be TSA's mission statement. Ahem. When open, the gills combine with two underbody vents to allow cooling air to be sent all over the vehicle to chill everything, including the front and rear brakes, the battery, and even the intercooler. There's a performance aero benefit, too, of course. How does it really drive? This should be no shock, but the 911 Hybrid Coupe's acceleration is rapid. Porsche is claiming the new Carrera 4 GTS Hybrid hits 62 miles per hour in 3.0 seconds, down from 3.4 in the non-hybrid 992.1. Our crack test team got the RWD 992.1 GTS to 60 miles per hour in 2.9 seconds and the GTS 4 to 60 miles per hour in 2.8. Should Porsche be telling the truth that the hybrid is quicker by nearly half a second, that puts the 992.2 hybrid clearly into supercar territory, at least in terms of acceleration. To drive home what more speed means, the previous generation cars did 11.1 RWD and 10.9 AWD seconds in the quarter mile. Gulp. Weirdly, perhaps because of some magic coming from the audio system, the coupes sure sound a lot meaner than the open-top cars. The fat, Porsche-specific Goodyear Eagle F1 supercar tires help provide tremendous grip, as they should considering the rears have now grown to a massive 315 30 to 21. 
The front tires remain the same at 245 35 to 20. There's still enough playfulness in the chassis to rotate under both braking and power, even in the AWD version, but you'll have to turn the traction control off or at least down. That's both fun and useful, which we'll get to in a moment. The brakes on the track cars were Porsche's yellow calipered carbon ceramic rotors, and they showed zero signs of fade or degradation after repeated lapping. Power, grip, stopping power, fun, this is exactly what you want in a sports car. Well, that and a damn good reason to add the complexity of a hybrid system, it's a good thing Porsche had a damn good reason. When you rotate the knob on the steering wheel to Sport Plus, one of the things that happens is the computer keeps the electric turbo spooled up to 120,000 revolutions per minute. This means that if you rotate the car properly, you can absolutely blast out of corners. Not only can the electric motor send all its torque to the driven wheels, but turbo lag is also literally and scientifically eliminated. Obliterated, even. The initial burst off a corner is quite EV-like. Just awesome. Moreover, performing such shenanigans doesn't deplete the battery. I kept rolling into pit lane with more than 90% state of charge. Worst Porsche 911 ever? No, not even kind of. Haters are certainly going to hate, but for now it's a free country. Best 911 ever? No. Based on the laps I drove, it's easy to make a case for the 992.2 GTS Hybrid as the best non-GT, non-turbo 911 yet, but the GT division still stands at the top. But we can say the 5th generation GTS is a truly superlative sports car, one with a nearly invisible hybrid system that promises any electric future for the 911 is going to be okay.